Toastmasters guests. I think all of us uh, remember the time when we draw pictures like this. Enjoyable and colorful. We enjoy this time, right? When we paint, draw this, uh, it's uh, uh, very emotional. Though not many of us continue this hobby. It is a little bit pity, isn't it? Because we, uh, we do not have, uh, some of us do not have enjoyable experience in our life. Could you please raise your hand who would like to get back the enjoy enjoyable experience and uh, uh, improve the painting and drawing skills? Very good. That's the right audience. Excellent. Thank you for this. I have a good news. First of all, you do have everything for painting. Secondly, it is easy. It is really easy. At the end of the speech, I'm going to make it as part of your knowledge as well and share some tricks of how to do it. What do we need for painting? Three basic things. We need eyes, we need pants, and we need brain. Our eyes are very sophisticated devices. It's a kind of a 150 megapixels camera, which is much more advanced than any of digital cameras nowadays. Though for painting, you need very basic. If you can recognize color, light, and shapes, believe me, it is enough for painting. Second component, hands. Again, advanced mechanical tool. Also, if you if you write if you can write and then your text is readable, again, that's enough for painting. And sometimes <laughs> even hands are not required for such beautiful hobbies. Right. The third component is crucial. It is our brain. Thanks God we have brain. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, thanks to uh, ability to think, we, we can experience emotions, we can make our painting meaningful, we can talk to other people through the painting. It is, it is crucial and key things for, for, for this uh, type of uh, uh, exercises. However, painting could be, uh, brain could be also... <laughs> Uh, a blocker. Let me explain. Uh, after when we when we watch out after the scrambling phase of uh, you know painting, uh, children they make a great discovery. You know they draw a circle with the two dots, and this is a symbol of face. Amazingly, because only people with brain can recognize this as a face. It is, it is discovery of, uh, of uh, fundamental discovery actually, it's discovery of world of symbols. It is foundation for our ability for thinking and also for the fine arts as well. Rapidly, uh, children develop the, uh, the symbols, you know. They draw a picture like this, and they say, eh, it is house, right? Or they draw a picture like this, and they say, it is eye. They develop symbols rapidly. They train the brain to think through this world of uh, uh, language of symbols. This is really good. It's not bad at all. Because it is, as I said, foundation for our ability to think and being human, uh, uh, be as a human being. However, at the age of 10 years, children try to go to the next step. They try to make pictures very, detail, very detailed, as detailed as possible. And they, instead of a instead of, uh, simple face, they'd like to paint uh, or draw a picture like this. Instead of house, they'd like to draw a picture like this. And instead of eye, 
something like this. However, you can, you can imagine that it's quite difficult and uh, almost not possible for child 10 years old to make a merge between symbol world and uh, the real pictures. It is hardly possible. And very soon ch children make a statement, I cannot paint. And they carry over this statement through the rest of the life. And if we don't have a good teacher nearby, then unfortunately uh, uh, that's, that's a disaster. What we can do about it? I can uh, actually, you can, I think you already realized already, because the problem is with the mode of how we think. And it's just a matter of making change within the way of thinking. And uh, uh, we in uh, fine art schools, there are lots of tricks how to do it. And um, I'd like to share with you one of them, which I, I think is one of the most powerful, for me at least. It is so-called empty space method. What do I mean? Imagine if you need to draw a chair. Instead of drawing a legs, surface for sitting and back, just focus your, uh, your thinking on the space between the shape of, uh, of the chair. You see, on this shape, just focus on this. It is big enough. But the trick is that our brain cannot recognize what that symbol is about. We know what legs, we know how chair looks like, but uh, normally we try to draw symbols instead of the real thing. But if we focus on the awkward, strange shapes, our brain cannot recognize and cannot match symbols. That's a trick. And then when, when you collect the, uh, draw the next uh, uh, empty space, actually it might be not empty. Maybe it's carpet, maybe it's dog sitting around or socks. It doesn't matter, but for you, for this exercise, it could be treated as an empty space. And eventually, the, the picture of the chair becomes visible for you. And uh, it, is, it is wow, actually. And uh, for me, it was wow when, uh, when, I was, uh, when I saw it first time. And I'd like to, you know, share that with you. Also, uh, such kind of trick, such kind of uh, exercise is healthy because you can look at it as a, as a yoga for your brain because your brain could become more flexible if you are able to change from one mode of operation to another one frequently and easily. Okay? To sum up as a conclusion, I, I'd like to encourage you for, to make experiment. I'd like to encourage you to open uh, a new space of uh, enjoyable experience of uh, painting and drawing. Share it with uh, your friends, children, families. You know, you have everything for this. You have hands, eyes, brain, and now you have tricks. It is damn easy. Thank you.